I've been collecting movie posters literally for 32 years. And I'm very much into movie posters. So for me, it's hard to realize that most people don't even know you can collect them. And that there's a market for them, and that very rare and valuable ones do exist and can be found. But they can. If someone came to me and said, what makes a great movie poster? My answer to them would be somewhat complex because it's difficult to explain a feeling about something you've spent 40 years doing. There are so many elements to it, there's a lot of depth to what you're looking for. So you try to simplify it in some ways. And you think about the films themselves which touch you in a certain way and bring you to a certain place in your life. Then it's the hunt that you've gone through looking for it. When you find a particular poster with a particular star that you love and you're able to sum it all up in one piece of paper, it's that combination that all comes together to make you love this particular poster. Canary Murder Case with Louise Brooks has a special place in my heart and this was a film that she shot as a silent before she went off to Germany to make her other films, the last great films of her career. The poster itself is very special to me because it's a great image of her, the last poster of her that has a strong central image. It's got a lot of fright in it, it's got a lot of action in it, and uh, I love it. Beyond the Rocks was a 1922 film which starred Rodolph, not Rudolph, Rodolph Valentino, they changed it a little bit later, and Gloria Swanson, a film that was long thought to be lost and was discovered recently in Holland. I bought it over 30 years ago and didn't cost me that much. And I've always loved the painterly style of it. The Bad and the Beautiful is a somewhat typical poster from MGM for the 1950s. They liked having posters that featured the main stars and a white background. This movie, of course, was about the making of movies and Lana Turner and Kirk Douglas are very elegant and glamorous on this poster which in that case it really does represent the movie. I love pre-code posters. They're sexy, they're outrageous, they're everything a poster should be to me. I love Frank Capra and I love Barbara Stanwyck. This poster is beyond belief because it shows her letting it all hang out for the warlord who she was in love with. It's a quintessential pre-code poster. It goes beyond many of the freedoms that the art department could have come up with at, even at that time. House on Haunted Hill is one of these classic Vincent Price horror epics from the 50s. It's got beautiful art with these blues and with Vincent Price looking really eerie. This is like your archetypal 50s drive-in poster. Here we have the Italian two-folio for the movie Born Yesterday. And what's really wonderful about this is the artist, Ballister. He always seemed to have his finger on the pulse of whatever the movie was about. And in this case, he very well represents the love triangle between the three main characters. I have no problem having a foreign poster for an American film. I'd say 90% of my collection is American original release posters. But for example, I was in Aspen a couple of years ago and I went into a gallery there and found a Buster Keaton General poster, which I thought was one of the most amazing posters I've ever found. To see this with the two images of Keaton as well as the trains all in a great Russian design was very exciting to me. Akatoni is a landmark in Italian cinema, but the poster is important too. It has this very sort of beautiful but cold, hard-edged look. It's a break from the more romantic and pictorial posters that come in the Italian poster art before it. Here we have the one sheet for Breakfast at Tiffany's, and this is a movie poster that sort of transcends the whole genre of movie poster collecting. It carries over into all poster collecting. It is the iconic movie poster of the 1960s. What Price Hollywood is from 1932 is a film that talks about things that are even come right up to today in that what faces the celebrities as big stars with paparazzi, with the newspapers, with tabloids. It was no different then. In some ways it may have been just as vicious or more vicious at that point. Here you have a beautiful blonde, gorgeous, ex-brown derby actress who became a big star under the tutelage of a director who was using her in many ways. 
but around her in the poster design, you see all of the tabloid headlines about her. It tells a lot about what stars have to go through with the many pressures and because of what the newspapers do to them. Every era, whether you're talking about 1900 or yesterday, has certain movie posters that are really important and that are already rare. When Donnie Darko got released, it went to just a tiny number of theaters, it played for a week, and they couldn't have done more than a handful of these posters. It's a great poster showing all the different characters in The Rabbit. They already have manufactured fakes of this thing. This is the real one, but imagine. Someday this will probably be a very valuable poster, but even now, it's a lot of work to find one. Big Lebowski is a movie a lot of people really like, and this poster was only used overseas, and you can go a really long time and not find it. The sunglasses, the dude, and what does this dude see in the sunglasses? He sees the carpet that got stolen from him. My book, Starstruck, is all about my feeling about the stars, very often the beautiful female stars of the 20s and the 30s, and a few other examples.